Once again, we are back in session with the Honorable Dr. Umar Johnson. Man, uh, we've been going viral. Uh, we've been having <laughs> some, some heated conversations, some discourse, uh, but I feel like they're all healthy. Yes, yes, um, yes. And we left off in the last session with me asking the question, and it's even the reason why I've created Council Culture, because mm -hmm. uh, I want to be accountable. I want to be held accountable for, for everything from the community, yes, uh, from individuals. Uh, and I'm a true example of somebody who has been canceled many times mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. for things I've said, for things I've done, for mm -hmm. opinions that I've had, uh, things that uh, I've pontificated. What I've learned, I'm attempting to not just get out here on my soapbox and say, this is what I know. Mm -hmm. As we know, we're mm -hmm. both avid readers. We're both people who probably, you know, uh, educated at certain levels on many different topics. And I've made the mistake in the past to often just regurgitate things mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, without doing the proper research. And we mm -hmm. talked about this in the last session, of like the responsible voices of being able to just say different things because we heard someone yes, else. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so for council culture, it's about creating dialogue, creating safe spaces to have these conversations uh, and learn. Mm -hmm. And more importantly than learn, to heal. Uh, so I left off at the end last session and starting off this session with uh, asking a professional uh a doctor of clinical psychology, uh, do you feel I'm irresponsible as an entertainer, as uh, a black man with, uh, as people say uh, in the community, a, a, a super father, or some people even could say someone who has created many broken homes. I have 12 children. Okay. Um, I, I uh, am an open and free-spirited individual who, like we talked about before, mm -hmm. feel everyone has the ability to live their life the, in which way that they mm -hmm. wish, and I, mm -hmm. I pass no judgment on anyone. Yes, sir. Uh, I entertain, and in, in that same form, I've created shows like Wildin' Out to various different shows, to Bad versus Wild uh, on, with Zeus, and all, all type of things where I've been ridiculed, and uh, people often, you know, irresponsible is light in what they've called me online. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I say that to say, if there is a place, uh, if there is a place that I've been responsible, uh, because as we know, Malcolm X probably said it the best that uh, you know the 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 media is the most powerful tool on the planet mm -hmm. because it can have you you know loving your oppressor and hating the oppressed. Um, but me knowing that, and me knowing that media is really just an acronym for manipulated entertainment designed to influence all. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to do the culturally responsible thing with council culture, but I got to hold myself accountable. So mm -hmm. as I sit here before you as a man who uh, I've heard many times say that we should not uh, uh, lightly say that we should not date outside our race. You for, you've mm -hmm. made it, you've made many more colorful statements mm -hmm. <laughs> from, <laughs> from the idea of, you know, going skiing with the snow bunnies mm -hmm. <laughs> in mm -hmm. many other terms, but mm -hmm. You know, I, I do have children with multiple races mm -hmm. of women um, and, you know, white being one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm interested to know, one, how you feel about this. And then, mm -hmm. and, you know, as I sit next to you, and you know, I, I consider you my brother. I consider you someone that I admire and, and look up to in many different ways. But, Likewise. you know, sometimes we agree to disagree on, on various but this is a safe space yes, to, sir. Yes, to have sir. this conversation. Yes, so sir. I say all that to say, you know, as someone, I'm sitting on your couch today, Doc. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, heal me, help me. Right, right. When we deal with interracial relationships, mm -hmm. I always like to qualify the conversation for people who are listening, especially those outside the community, so that they understand I don't come from a place of hate. Okay. I have nothing against the Caucasian woman. Asian woman, Latina woman, East Indian, Arab, all the various beautiful women of the world. I have nothing against them, but I'm loyal to the black woman because she suffered the most I agree, 1, at the hands of this society 100%. and this planet. And because I come from a black woman, I have a special obligation towards her. And when I look at when our successful black men tend to marry out or reproduce outside of the community, I think on some level it can be insulting to our sisters. Okay. Uh, I consider it insulting to the community as a whole. And 
as someone who works in the school, I've had to entertain conversations with black girls who are asking Dr. Umar, is there something wrong with me? Because it appears that when you all make it, y'all always abandon the community in pursuit of your spouse. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the wealth differential between successful black men and the women they choose to marry or reproduce with, it's very obvious that there is a significant financial gain to the woman in many times, which equals a significant financial loss to the black community. I've heard you say this many times. Let me that's, a very, you, that's a very small percentage of the group of overall interracial dating. Because but, there's only so many successful black men at that level that can elevate and create generational wealth. Okay. Because if we keep it a stack up, Okay. The most interracial relationships we see, because I've heard you say this before, uh -huh. the most interracial relationships we see is a strong, handsome black brother with a, a, a unshapely okay, okay. <laughs> right. white woman right. that's he's happy e to guy. He's equally after. Trying to be this as, good, as right. clear as possible. Right. But it's it's a, a black man that can have any woman he want, but because he can put his uh, car in her name uh -huh. and he can financially right. gain off of this white woman right. who who looked like she done had a couple of Taco Bell trips. Right. <laughs> that, that, right, right. That, and she happy that she got her a uh -huh. good black man. Uh-huh. And those are the questions of why these young black girls are like, why would he choose her okay. and not me? Because she got the paper. Right, but either way. And that's the majority. Now, we, you see the athletes or the entertainers right. that might get them a... But that's know, because there's only a few of you at that upper echelon. Right. But for those of you who are at the top 1%, right, right income bracket, y'all go out the community to marry more than men similarly placed in their community. That's such a small percentage right. though. Right, but black men marry outside of their race more than every other group of men per capita. And I'm not making this as an excuse or an example. No, no, no not at all. Yeah, but yeah. I'm saying that can't yeah. be that cannot be that cannot be attributed purely to coincidence. So let me ask you a question directly, okay. uh, brother Nick. You have beautiful African children by beautiful non-African women. Right. Would you say, honestly, your decision to reproduce with non-African women, was that deliberate? I don't want my sisters. Or were you a victim of unconscious self-hate programming? Now, I've had this conversation on another one of my platforms with uh, my brother Reza Islam. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny because online they cut it up. Okay. And they made it seem like I was saying... And I didn't see that clip, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, it was a clip where it, was, it pretty much was... I was saying exactly that, that we've been programmed and conditioned to be that the white woman is superior. Mm -hmm. That's uh, And I made all the statements that, that there was a time mm -hmm. that... Um, and obviously all the sisters came for me because they just saw that, that mm -hmm. element of the clip. There was a time in which white women were looked at as... The standard. Uh, not just the standard, but symbols of success. True. And or even that are unattainable. If we okay. go all the way back okay. to slavery. For that big we're, fruit. For we not supposed, and, and vice versa. Okay. They looked at us like we ain't supposed to be messing with them. And we mm. was like, we are not alive. We can die. If right. we mess but see, with that's them. the difference. Yeah. You could die messing with them. <laughs> right. They're not going to die messing with you, though. So I say all of that to say, mm. I understand the 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 social programming, mm -hmm. and I truly believe it's so. And, and then that makes me, as someone who's done the yes, research sir. and that, and the understanding, goes all the way back to even defining what is race and when was race defined, and it, as we know. But before you define that, does Nick Cannon have a bias against black women when it comes to romance? The quick answer is absolutely not. Because then how I, that, do you justify? I don't. I None. say this because okay. one, just as one, I got a white baby mama, I got a dark skinned baby mama too. So right. in that sense, I love. I can equally say I ain't got no type. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I love. But women. I would push back because as a successful black man who has children with multiple women, for almost none of them, or let me take the positive, right. only one of them being of African descent, does that not suggest that you clearly search out those? who are not of your racial group. So that's why I had to go here first. And we're gonna, like, I don't want to get too deep. I want to talk absolutely, over anyone's absolutely, head. Absolutely, absolutely. Of phenotypes. 
Because okay. in that sense, when I'm talking about the origin of race, because before there was race, there was phenotypes. And really, that's just based off of okay. the com compl what we look like. Okay. So in that sense, to where in, I guess, what the German doctor in, in whatever, 16, mm -hmm. 1700s, Dr. Johann Frederick Blumblatt, was okay. the dude, okay. the, the, the psychologist yep. who said, who <laughs> yeah. created race okay who hit i think it was seven identities and it was everything mm -hmm. from african to ethiopian to white to where they could put this hierarchy system that white mm -hmm. was on top mm -hmm. therefore that they could classify why everyone else was subdominant mm -hmm. so in that before that infrastructure was created and that was even during slavery mm -hmm. had already been established here you know in, mm -hmm. in america before the term race was created okay so it was phenotype and what we look like and origin in which we came from okay and as a as a pan-african I know you understand okay. the ideas that even with, uh, we've been there, even within the motherland, even in the continent, there's a hierarchy of complexionism. And, there's, and, mm -hmm. and sometimes even- Introduced in, by the oppressor. Of course, okay. it's colonization. Okay. And even and then now in the terms of, I, and I've gotten in trouble for this, to okay. saying, <laughs> talking about the power of melanin. Mm. In the sense of, as, mm. as Tupac say, the black of the berry, the sweet of the juice. I would agree. And and in that <laughs> sense, so yes, like mm. I said before, there is an idea of the standard of what we believe to be beautiful. I believe uh, a, a dark complected woman who embraces all of her naturalness is is far superior, especially in this day, and mm -hmm. in, in her beauty than someone who is attempting to assimilate or look like someone else. So if you have any more children, she's going to be a chocolate goddess. Did I, I just... mean, I got one. <laughs> I have Did a, I just hear this I have, a, say? I have a daughter named Onyx. Now, but I'm not saying I don't, I'd have just as much love as I have for Onyx as I have for my oldest Monroe. You I know believe what I mean? that. I and, believe that. And I in that, that sense, it, it's unfortunate because mm -hmm. I feel like we're the only community that has to deal with complexionism at this level. And mm -hmm. But white supremacy introduced that into us. Uh, because there's the caste system and the class system that, that's in, in India. That's Right, but caste, that, that is true. That is true. But who introduced that into India? I they were like colonized they, by the British. They were as well, but <laughs> again, because as you remember, and, and it's in the books, and I don't want to uh -huh. say this, I don't I wanna, but even <laughs> right, in the African right. consciousness, um, mm -hmm. uh, and and it shows as we go all the way back mm -hmm. to to those conversations of when the white man did come on the continent, we looked at them as foreign and and inferior. Oh, absolutely. The white man was traditionally painted as the devil in African culture. So in before that, we ever encountered him. Right. So in that, it was never at some point, and however it happened through the colonization mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of that, this idea of beauty okay. of a lighter complexion, a thinner nose, a thinner lip individual was so placed you, on us. Okay, okay. So you fell victim to that. I don't think I did. Okay. I, I, okay. I feel okay. like okay. 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 um Again, like I said, if, and it's it's so complex even in my world because, you know, I one of the mothers of my children has a strong, you know, Islam background. And when I say okay. Islam, I'm Muslim from, from Africa, okay. you know, and, and those understandings, but she's lighter complected. One would okay. one wouldn't one would look at her and wouldn't wouldn't even know. Or even even in the sense of the one of the mothers of my children is is uh a dark skin complected, but still can be considered Afro Latina because okay. what so so it's but so African Latinas are still African hundred percent just a different language. But it, again, but even within their infrastructure, yes, <laughs> they have the color system. hierarchy. Yeah, there's a, introduced by the white supremacy, though. Right. So when I say that, I'm not looking to see oh how dark you are, how right. full your lips are, how wide mm -hmm. your nose is. It's, Let me take it another way. Right. When Princess Onyx grows up with her siblings, right, you're going to have to have a conversation along yes. with their mothers, yes, about colorism. Hundred percent. As someone who grew up in a home with a dark sister who was right. darker than me, beautiful, but my older sister was darker. Right. I saw how she suffered mm. some of the pangs of colorism within my extended family. Hundred percent. So when Onyx gets to the age where she begins to recognize race, mm -hmm. and Brother Nick Cannon has to have that conversation 
uh, with her mother and the mothers of your other children and your children, your family. Right. You're going to have to have this conversation. And when you start explaining to Onyx that your blackness is in no way a sin or a curse, it's a blessing it's a and blessing. a power. Absolutely. Right? When she reflects back to you. Her name is Onyx for a reason. Absolutely. <laughs> right. It's black power, actually. Yeah, yeah. But when she reflects back to you as her father and say, well, dad, if this color is all that great, how did you end up to reproduce so many children with women who are not this color? Was, what would you say to Onyx? Say, dad has a problem of wanting an assortment of flavors. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> it's, the, it's the truth. I want to taste everything. Uh, I want to know what that tastes like. I want to know what that tastes like. And it's just, and, and if I'm being honest, uh -huh. sitting here, it's just like, and I said, I got in trouble and I, and I, I, I apologize because I didn't know it hit him this way. Um, and I apologize again. Mm -hmm. I was on one of these podcasts and I was outwardly speaking and I think I, it kind of came out the wrong way. I was speaking about my brother, Travis Scott. Okay. What happened with and, Travis And it was Scott? when, you know, cause you know. The situation had, that happened. No, no. He has a, he has a child with Kylie Jenner. Okay. And I was attempting to take his side and, and say, I, the statement I made, I said in Travis dating Kylie at no point do I think he was attempting to make a cultural statement. And in that, I think it got perceived. But is ignorance an excuse for irresponsibility? You asked that question before. Yes. I think it was perceived as him saying, but I was actually saying, I do the same thing where like, okay. I'm doing it for love. Okay. I'm not doing it to be right here to say I'm doing it for my community or any of that stuff. I'm doing okay. it because I love this woman. Now, okay. now it may be, and, I don't and it that. may be ignorant okay. because like, oh, I'm not thinking about okay. what the community is gonna think. I'm doing it because, man, I fell in love with this woman regardless okay. of her complexion, regardless uh, okay. of her race, regardless of her upbringing. But do I, you have an obligation to the community though? You I married her because you loved her. No, I but do you have so because I, I get this all the time. You can't talk black and sleep white. You right, can't be I'm black go in the streets and white further. in the sheets. When we look at childhood actors, yes, you are the most prominent, successful <laughs> black childhood actor probably in American history. <laughs> right. People think of Nick Cannon. You understand? <laughs> right, right. So. I, to all the beautiful chocolate black girls of the same complexion as your beautiful daughter Onyx and even those of every other complexion, yours, right. mine's, and so forth, for you to be the king of childhood actors, which means our daughters love you, they talk about you, I heard kids talk about you the other day in positive manner, <laughs> right. do you not feel any guilt at all for the fact you did not Provide them with that wholesome example of showing them how much a black woman deserved to be loved on by not choosing one yourself. So I'm, I've got to unpack this in many ways because okay. sitting on a psychologist's couch, yes, I feel guilty. Okay. But I feel guilty for multiple things. Okay. And, okay. and what I've learned about there's nothing wrong with guilt doesn't mean shame. I agree with you. Guilt means accountability. I agree with you. I totally agree. And I say that to say, so symbolism, what our community sees, mm -hmm. who they hold up high and revere is all real. So I always talk about equanimity in that sense of where I must be responsible to if I faltered in this way, okay. I have to make up for it in this way. Okay. So, okay. I know I am unsuccessful mm -hmm. <laughs> when it comes to relationships. Okay. From I've I have a failed marriage, I've had many mm -hmm. failed relationships, and this is all based off of society's measurement and measurement. And for system. the record. Yeah. I was a little jealous of you when you married Mariah. Cause I was a lot. <laughs> Who is light skinned I was in a, a mug? Listen, when I was in college, <laughs> I, I mean, this is before y'all time. But when I was in college at Millersville University, Mariah Carey poster was on my wall. Facts. When y'all got, I said, how did Nick get Mariah? <laughs> That's what everybody said. I was in love with Mariah. But go ahead. And go we ahead. just, we just, young Moroccan just gave you yes, that sir. right there. Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. That is, a, that is fruits of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in the sense, I say all of this to say, there, that's the reason for this mm -hmm. space. Yes, is, sir. Is yes, sir. Where I believe 
I got to be held accountable for certain things. But in mm -hmm. that sense to whether it's my daughter Onyx or my other daughters and mm -hmm. uh, the daughters of, of our community, I got to, I am an example whether I want to be one or not. And that's why I was like, I don't mm -hmm. believe in role models because roles are things that you play. I'm a real model. I'm a real mm -hmm. individual. So therefore, there's going to be a lot of things that happen in my life that everyone's not going to agree with. And I think you're going to rectify it because looking into the future, which only God can see. Right. Through your daughter Onyx. I think you're going to do some great things with your other children as well. Right, right. But through your daughter Onyx, because of her beautiful, richly melanated, original African complexion, I think y'all going to bring forth some programs, mm. some projects, okay, some organizations, <laughs> a cartoon, <laughs> right, right. A, a line of children's books to build black girl self. You understand? Because one thing I do, and I've had these conversations, one mm -hmm. thing I do know. With my daughter, Onyx, I'm going to have to have different conversations. With yes, her sir. You will. Yes. Daughter. Yes. Because of the way yes. the society is. Set and you're going to have to have conversations with them yeah. to make sure they remain conscious of their bias. Yeah. yeah. When they're relating to their sister. Be yeah. hundred percent. And, and they're, because, again, their mother is probably one of the most beautiful. And mm -hmm. I, I even forget even saying dark skin. Yes. But because of her complexion is dark skin, but one of the most beautiful women. Yeah, I think the chocolate only adds to the beauty. Yeah, and, and to be able to be that with that. Yes, sir. Yes, you sir. know what I mean? It is 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 so powerful in itself. Yes, to sir. be able to walk in the room and be so striking. Mm -hmm. and, and, I agree. And, and, and so attractive. Mm -hmm. And to not look like everyone Absolutely. else. Especially today where every woman on Instagram looks Absolutely. exactly the same. There's nothing more regal, yeah. more honorable, more earth shattering, more attention grabbing yes. that when a chocolate black woman walks into the room and I'm going to add natural hair to that because that's my bias. <laughs> but when a chocolate natural African woman walks into a room full of self-confidence and owns it, the whole room bows down, not literally, but in a metaphorical way, because that right there is God. And what I mean by that, when I say the chocolate African woman is God, she is the original complexion of the first person God put on the planet Earth. And since the black woman is the only woman with the mitochondrial DNA, the Eve gene, and with the chocolate African woman being the most melanated, because that's the most original, she is God. And I'm saying we that come not from to deny her. anyone else their divinity. We all come from Absolutely. her. Absolutely. We all come from her. And so it's just so hurtful for me yeah. being a psychologist working in the schools where I see the shame mm. that a lot of our chocolate princesses endure because they've been miseducated against the fact that when you look in the mirror, you shouldn't see something ugly. Right. You should see the most beautiful being on earth. Right. And as I said, I believe you and your princess along with your other children, y'all going to bring forth something to help shut down the colorism. Because what you do have, Nick, yeah. is you have every complexion in your children. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying to you, I'm charging you in the future because yeah. you got a long way to go. Yeah. Turn that. Yeah. You understand me? That's Into a weapon of mass construction, construction. to destroy colorism yeah, yeah. in our community. I love it. Can I offer this up? Just because, I, mean, I mean, I'm sitting on your couch. I'm, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I'm right here. I, I, need, I need the help and the understanding. And again, by no means yes, this is an excuse, but I want to yes, unpack it. Could it be that my mother, um, who is of mixed race, okay, um, and because I, I was thinking about this when you asked me, mm -hmm. am I, you know, have I been programmed or conditioned yes, sir. to go after a certain type of woman? If my mother, who is a a lighter skinned mixed mixed woman, um, if that was my example as a matriarch, and then even in her mother being of another race, and on my father's side, his mother having, as we all know, because, mm -hmm. and then as we go down our lineage, we all gonna be mixed with something. Mm -hmm. And I know as a, you know, Pan-Africanist, there's an idea of holding on to the diaspora. Yes, sir. But the African-American, and which is a whole different classification, mm -hmm. a, a black person mm -hmm. uh, in America is mixed okay. with everything. Right. So for anyone to sit and say... But those mixtures does not take away from the fact you're still African. 100%. Because we're the strongest DNA. 100%. Mm -hmm. So if I, if, if people say, you know, again, because we're, you said you uh, uh, you got a lot of this ideology because you look and see 
what you came from yes. your mother. Yes. So if yes. I look and my mother looks mm -hmm. and has the complexion of a look that is maybe similar okay. to a lot of the mothers of my children. Okay. You know, there's been a lot of conversations where they talk about, you know, my mother and Mariah. Okay. Do they look similar in complexion? They, 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 yes. They, okay. Okay. They, they look like they cut from the same cloth. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. And, and, and various, if, if we're just talking about complexionism, psychologically, would you think that maybe is that more of the reason? It definitely plays to, a role. Because you know, I was going to ask you yeah. earlier in this uh, conversation, uh, do you feel that your mother or grandmother right. could have influenced your taste in women? Right. Because our mothers do influence us. Yeah. Right? Because my mother happens to be my complexion. Right. In fact, I look more like my mother than any of her other six children. Okay. The mother is the first teacher, as we all know. And I said, my, my right. mother is, you know, light skin, curly hair, mm -hmm. you know, my, her, you know. Right. And she's my, still with us in the yeah, flesh. Yeah, okay. So if I were to have a conversation with your queen mother, I would ask her, not only does your son possibly prefer women of your complexion, because you are his first example of love. Our first love affair is our mother, right? Absolutely. But I would also ask her, is it possible, in addition to you simply being uh, his first love affair, spiritually speaking, did you pass down core beliefs to your son as it relates to women and complexion? In other words, was yeah. it purely by example of her existence as your mother? Yeah. Or were there certain beliefs and messages she gave to you and values based on skin tone? Could she have inadvertently transferred some of her beliefs onto you in terms of white is is better or prettier or lighter or, girls yeah, are more? Always, yeah, it's probably, you know what I mean? Because we probably never had that conversation. Right. But it's just the example of watching what sh she was Right. Assimilating right. to, to, right. Where, to right. the idea of what society right. shows us. Right. You know what I mean? As we sit back and talk about where you you say you have posters mm -hmm. of Mariah on the wall. I have and, of Mariah. You know, Mariah and, and one Hallie. of the things I respected yeah. about Mariah, yeah. I don't know her whole history, yeah. but one of the things I did respect about Mariah because what happened is when uh, Rest in Peace Whitney Houston kind of receded, Yeah. because I was Whitney, yeah, yeah. and Mariah was the closest thing to her. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I went facts, from facts. Whitney to Mar Mariah. But one of the things I respected about Sister Mariah, especially in this atmosphere where so many mixed race African children would rather be called biracial than black, yeah. Mariah told the world, yeah. I'm black. Yeah. You understand me? Facts. Because if she didn't, yeah. that poster would have never been up. <laughs> but, but, but that takes me to another question for you. Yeah. As you navigate that terrain with your children, yeah. Will Nick Cannon be unapologetic about letting them know they're black? 100%. Okay. That's easy. Or will you get pushback from their mothers? Nah, they're black. They, they, they know, again, because of the okay. society. Which, okay. My children are black. Right. And, that, and that's even, that because me, that conversation. But are they mothers on board? But no, but that, that, that's that conversation okay. about generational wealth that we got to throw out the window because okay. everybody says, oh, we, you know, if you go date outside your race, then where's the general, general wealth conversation? Okay. My once they have me mm -hmm. as the father, as whether it's the law or whether it's the one drop rule or whether mm -hmm. in America, yes, you are black. That's true. But do their mothers support? Hundred percent. Okay, yeah. so they have no problem no with you problem. letting them know you're no. black. Okay, yeah, they're, they're, okay, because you know sometimes. No, they want to be called mixed. The, the, or the, I'm the, just the, much the, as this as that. Sometimes no. the non-African mother of the mixed race African children are not comfortable. With, in fact, I had a debate. It was respectful with right. a white woman right. at one of my lectures in Tallahassee, Tampa. Right. And we debated because she says, I do not want my daughter who has a black father. I do not want her identifying as black. I want her identifying as mixed race. And you know what I had to explain to her? What did you explain? Because you are racist. Mm. You cannot admit that a black child came from your womb. And because of your own core beliefs about African inferiority, you would rather raise your child with a lie that she's mixed race than raise her with the truth that she is black. You're forcing her to live a confused life because you don't want to bear your shame. Why? And guess what? What? She peacefully bowed out. After she had that. to. But this is my, my only question to that is why can't you be both? And I only say that because, okay, because okay. at the core, the foundation, you're black. Absolutely. <laughs> There's no other question. And like, the reason you can't be both, 
you still have a white parent. Right. You never, and I tell mixed race children this, you don't ever disrespect your mother. That is your mother. You tell the world, I don't care if you're black, white, purple. She brought you here, that's mom. Yeah, yeah. You understand? But racially, spiritually, genetically, anatomically, Society. you are African yeah. because we are the dominant DNA. Right. And we are the birthers of the other group. So when you say I'm half of something that came from your blackness, <laughs> right, right. it doesn't even make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? But a lot of the our science. mixed race children are so confused, brother Nick, because they have the non-African parent trying to hypnotize them into believing the world is going to see them as biracial. When your children walk down the street, and I know you know this, so <laughs> I'm not teaching you nothing. <laughs> when your children walk down the street, Nobody says there goes a half black child. <laughs> nah. There goes a black child. Exactly. You, know, it you, get how pull, fair you get pulled over from the police. Absolutely. Get your black ass out the car. <laughs> Absolutely. Abs <laughs> but get again, your mixed race ass Going out the car. back to the mission I see you having in your future. Yeah. As I said, with your children, y'all going to be able to do a lot to combat colorism. And y'all going to be y'all going to be able to do a lot to educate mm. mixed race children on their African heritage. Because let's be honest, there's more of them than ever before. Yes. And most of them, because I know, because they come to me, <laughs> even the adults, yeah, they bet. feel isolated. I bet. So what if Nick Cannon and his children come out with a line of books? Yeah. You feel me? With mixed race characters where they go through the struggles of what it I is like to it. be black, having a not, you understand me? Yeah, I like it. Nah, Think about that, that's bro. Powerful. That's you, that is you right there. Yeah, yeah. That is the new Cos what was the what was the uh <laughs> fat album? That's yeah, the yeah, new yeah. fat album. The Cosby kids. A whole with mixed race kids and they go through the issues of race and things like that. Because one of one, one of the areas where I would constructively criticize our brothers and sisters in entertainment is I don't think y'all deal I don't think y'all deal enough with the real issues that our children suffer with that I think y'all can introduce into y'all content mm. and it not be offensive to no other group. Yeah, you said like that mixed race piece. Yeah, you can educate on that. Nobody gonna be offended by that. Yeah. That's exclusively a black. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So I just I just wish I would get more into that a little bit more. Yeah, man. It well, could really I, help. I think that's our prescription for that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I receive it, man. This has been a powerful yes, conversation. Uh, we 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 felt, you know what I mean, we revealed, and I definitely feel like we healed. I mean, in that sense, yes, sir. to where a lot of conversations, as you guys can see in the comments, yes. uh, are so much passion but i believe we embrace it with compassion absolutely and, absolutely. Uh, absolutely i appreciate your time uh i appreciate your counsel and you're truly one of our uh, as, as people i said our council men our, yes sir uh the people appreciate that sit that. on a, a council that. board that we look to leaders in our community and i'll tell mm -hmm. you keep going keep leading keep striding and uh we gonna we gonna be here for you, man. And oh man, I yes love sir. This Appreciate you, brother. Yes sir. That is dialogue yes, and this discourse. Highest class of civilization, Dr. Umar Johnson. Yes sir. On council culture, we out, y'all.